This college football picks week one, part one edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet a hundred dollars at WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash winbet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by SGPN Fantasy. Dominate your draft with the free SGPN draft kit. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash draft kit. And the free roll football contest is back and better than ever. Five thousand dollars up for grabs in our NFL contest and fifteen hundred dollars in our brand new college football contest. Sign up exclusively in our Discord. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. Hey folks, this is Bud Foster. You're listening to SGPN. Let's let it ride. Go hookies, man. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Cream? Dog. Oh, shout out to everything. Football is here. We're talking picks. I got the team good looking is back. Thunder and lightning, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Fun fact we're going to be talking about a team later today Ooh. that has their own thunder and lightning. I know that because oh I was God. grinding media tape from small fucking schools YouTube pages. Thanks to sounds Colby. like some lunch pail mentality, Ryan. Uh, yeah, I mean, we uh, we got it. We have a SGP lunch pail. Ryan determined it's not lunch paley enough, but uh, stay tuned for the debut of the lunch pail. Colby, it's like he. I, mean, I know. We know Colby doesn't isn't here yet, but yes. Colby, it's like he doesn't even understand what the lunch pail is all about. There, joining us here to talk college football, Colby Dan, aka the Danta Base. What's up, Colby? Oh, we're finally here. Let's just talk sport. Let's Darryl, talk football. Daryl Tap told you in all caps on Twitter. <laughs> it's a mentality. I didn't see any oh. grit oozing out of that thing, so I'm going to take it home. I'm going to manufacture some grit while I chop some wood in my backyard. <laughs> Might accidentally catch it with the axe, get a little ding in there. It's not gonna a lunch pail should not shut properly. That thing shuts too flush. <laughs> uh it will and, be fit. And for speaking a of grit, soon. I was out here with a uh, a, a hacksaw this morning, no. sawing off a hose. Uh shout out to the uh, pocket hose, real piece of shit hose. Never buy the pocket oh, hose. Can we talk it, about this yes, for a second? It was great. <laughs> So we were watching. Um, Hold on, what what happened? We were here? watching the infomercial on the pocket hose, and Colby goes, "What kind of idiot would buy this hose?" And I go, "Oh, I actually have a pocket hose. It's it's like a collapsible hose." And then he rapped hard for it. He goes, it's "Yeah, fantastic. it's fantastic. Like, it's a great hose." I go, "I'm getting a new one because the the old one kind of fell apart, but I was treating it rough. All right, fine. I go, I buy the new hose. I bring the hose back." The motherfucker like completely locked on to the uh, outdoor faucet. <laughs> so then I got to go back to Home Depot, return. Obviously, I'm not going to get the same hose. No. Return that hose, get a bandsaw, come back with a bandsaw. I wake up early this morning. I'm just grinding away at the uh, what, what hose the is this? The pocket hose. It's like a fifteen dollar hose. No, 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 Twenty five dollar hose. <laughs> where is this attached to? Yeah, your faucet outside. It's okay. a garden hose. Okay. Oh, it's one. Of, it's the one that like the will, collapsible. Oh, giant piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Which I I, I like for the most part. I don't want that big clunky vinyl hose, but I don't know if anyone has any good hose recommendations. I, I, slide I, into my DMs. I just want to know though. Did you see the infomercial like a couple of years ago and, and buy? Yeah, it I was sold that? on <laughs> it. Yeah, I, I liked it, and Dude, I had a good run with the pocket hose. I'll never they, fall for they, an infomercial, <laughs> man. In fairness, they do sell those at the hardware store, yeah. so it's not quite like sending your money in the mail somewhere. No. <laughs> but but uh, I will say, it, it it does seem like a good idea. Until you also realize that you can murder someone with it because it goes from nice and loose and it can wrap around stuff and you turn that water on, <laughs> I, I, I got a little bit of water pressure, <laughs> bam! That thing will lock on like a boa constrictor. Did, did you get the ear pick too? There's like the ear pick and it shows the commercial oh, wow. of the old guy going like this with the. He goes, <laughs> ow! <laughs> 
do a whole. Co- <laughs> Tell uh, me that sold you too. You go, oh yeah, those things are painful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's odd. It, yeah, it doesn't seem like. Anyway, yeah, that's. Uh, so you, you you got through your plumbing issues. Uh, yeah, I got the uh, and, and and in the process picked up a sweet bandsaw, American made. Unlike that piece of shit pocket the, hose. The, <laughs> you guys have a great hose. Uh, for outdoor gardening and watering, I, please recommend it to me. I mean, American made only. I'm not buying this. I could say I could go certain places. I'm just saying USA. I'm all almost the way. insulted you haven't asked me. This is the exact kind of thing that I would have. All right, an I'll talk. On. I'll talk hoses. You got that above around. ground pool coming in, right? Oh well, you know. I, I will say that the the beauty of uh, the garden hose is that the classic garden hose that you remember as a child, just mm-hmm. that green. Yeah, that, that is now considered not a, an attractive look. So those are actually you can get them for pretty cheap, and they're I've had it for five years and <laughs> hasn't disintegrated, hasn't almost murdered the dog. You know, I, the the vinyl hoses are clunky. We'll we'll save it for another wow. show. Wow, wow. Well, you, if you want, you need a man's tool. You gotta have a little <laughs> grit. Well, now it. I got a nice. See, we're back to the Milwaukee, lunch made in America, portable bandsaw. Our hacksaw. The beauty of uh, pl- the, the beauty of plumbing in. issues is chicks want nothing to do with them, and they're mostly things you can solve with brute force <laughs> and a little bit of smart. So yeah, nice job, Sean. Thank you. Hey, what I'm recommending is you not to buy the pocket hose. What I'm uh, what I'm saying you should do is in fact go to sportsgamblingpodcastcom slash win bet. The money I and time I spent on the pocket hose, I could have had a nice. Bet over on win bet. In fact, if you bet a hundred dollars, you get a hundred dollar free bet. Unlike the pocket hose, where you spend a hundred dollars, you get a cheap fucking piece of trash hose. Now, I mean, just throw that thing out the window. Unlike win bet, win bet's <laughs> great, man. Bet big, win big with win bet. And hey, you got a chance to uh, win a stay at the win Las Vegas. That's right, the free roll football contest giving away five thousand dollars in the NFL contest, fifteen hundred in college, and the winner of the NFL contest. Two free nights at the win, Las Vegas. All the lines we're picking uh, from college football week one coming directly from WinBet. <laughs> Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at WinBet.com must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through WinBet is available. If you're someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Do you also own like the? I saw the infomercial of the uh, the rock that you hide your key in the fake uh, rock. Hide a key? You know? <laughs> No, I'm laughing oh, that's because a good because Colby Colby t- uh, he stole my thunder there. <laughs> uh, you know what? While we're talking products, of course, make sure you head over to OddsTrader.com/slash/BlueWire. Become a part of my pregame gr- ritual. Your one-stop shop when it comes to gambling information, the best codes, the best promos, game day weather, play-by-play updates, handicapping info, game stats. They got it all. Odds trader.com slash blue wire. That's O D D S trader.com slash blue wire. Odds trader, the number one site for all your game day bets. Hey, what a week for the podcast debuting. We gave out a lot of winners. Uh, I think we should, before we get into the picks, do a little do, tout. Do session. we normally tout up top? Is that? Yes. I forget. <laughs> okay. Well, Ryan, it might have been a while since you've had an opportunity to tap, but yes, you were nine and five, sixty-four percent, a hundred percent on your locks. Even though the controversial Jacksonville State game, which most most books did give you the courtesy yeah, of the yeah. win, uh, yeah, well, not officially were, great. Flag on the play here. Flag on the <laughs> play were, here. We saw were. Phil Steele's tweet. Uh, okay, Colby. I'm I'm sure the Danta base was watching all the <laughs> minutes of all the games. Was there any doubt that uh, which team won that game? <laughs> no, absolutely I'm not. I'm just saying. What did I tell you? You <laughs> dumb motherfuckers are making Rich Rod a dog in the FCS. Hey, That's I what was I, said. On, I was that on Jacksonville was flying, State as well. man. That That's offense what I was flying. I mean, come on. You don't remember Pat White and Steve Slayton? Let's go, Colby. Yeah, Kramer went, those days. went nine and five. Hit uh, two and zero oh on his locks. Allegedly, um, hit his tees. <laughs> I went eight and six, uh, one and one on my locks. Charlotte really let us down. I mean, it, the quarterback got knocked out. That definitely hurt the uh, opportunity for the cover. I mean, their defense played like shit. So who knows if they would have got it? Regardless, yeah. I, I mean, really, what carried the day was <laughs> Northwestern yeah. on the money line plus four twenty five. Nice. That was a, thank you, Scott Frost. Salute <laughs> thank to you. Thank you for the onside kick. Yes, thanks for the onside <laughs> kick. Thanks for the memories. Scott Frost is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh Colby, nine and five, fifty percent on the locks. I think you also had 
uh, Charlotte in there. And and man, New Mexico State almost got that back door. I mean, they, I kept we shouldn't you, even have needed that. They outgained Nevada. They had what, yeah. four, four turns, five turnovers in general, four inside the yeah. 30. It, 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 in both ways, they should have covered and then also shouldn't have been in the game at all when you turn the ball over five times. But they had a chance. They put in the backup quarterback, got them some points. They were going in for the like garbage back door because um, Nevada was up like eleven or whatever and didn't need to play defense and they somehow threw an interception. So yeah, foolishly had Charlotte in my crazy parlay as well. Yeah, I mean, looking back at the week, what did we learn? Well, we learned we shouldn't have our dog in our lock match because then you look <laughs> like an asshole when you get both wrong. It's and okay. Colby and always loves doubling up. You can't okay. help it. I'll double up again later. Come and, out. and, and come don't, out. don't put ECU in there. And Colby. six points aren't worth as much when you add them to the point spread of a team that's barely an FBS team at this point in Wyoming. So just something to note. <laughs> I think. I mean, I will say this. I God bless YouTube, but able to watch some of the games that I didn't watch in real time. Uh, Sean, we're betting against Wyoming every week until yeah, Wyoming, until further notice. A couple teams were really bad. Wyoming, no, no, but uh, Wyoming, Hawaii, Ryan, uh, Hawaii is the worst. I mean, they got destroyed. Dude, at did home. you see the blocks in that game? Like their, their safety and linebacker play, it was on a high school level to me. Yeah, it was. It was really. Bad. I mean, you're losing so, at 53 right. at home yeah. to fucking I'm, Vanderbilt. I'm writing it down. Let's let's just put it down in stone. We're saying Hawaii definitely auto fade. Yeah, I think Hawaii is the worst team in the nation. All right. Uh, are we also saying Wyoming is auto fade? Uh, you can, uh, you can, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not at home. Yeah. We'll talk yeah. about it. But did I, you have that secret elevation? But I agree. I, I didn't see anything out of that Wyoming team. I love places with secret elevation. But, uh, but just because also, we assume no one thinks there's elevation outside of Colorado, and, That's great. and we're right. <laughs> Illinois has a really good defense, though. So I, I Illinois, yeah. huh? Their defense is good. Looking it's their sharp. offense that, that I worry about. Remember when I yeah. rolled that one out and you got you idiots picked Wyoming? That was my I don't point. recall that. <laughs> uh hey, we're doing this in two parts because there are a bunch of games. We got no NFL slate, yeah. so we're giving the fans what they want. Of course, we also are doing uh eight division previews, thirty-two <laughs> NFL individual team previews, sports gambling podcast.com mm. slash NFL previews. All right, let's kick it off. Kramer, give us the lines. All right, are the times right, Colby? Correct. Okay, so we're 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 sitting here. It's Thursday afternoon, four p.m. on the West Coast. Backyard brawl is about to start in beautiful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So all these games Thursday and Friday, just to be yeah. Clear. Uh, not in order because we're we're observing Colby's six pack, which is uh, of course Colby's top six games. Yeah, top six. Mm-hmm. Not not as far as what I like, as far as like what I think the six best games. Quality are. of yeah. game, Colby. Yeah. Always important that he explains this every year. So. No doubt, West Virginia at Pittsburgh on the top. Pittsburgh laying seven and a half, minus two ninety on the money line. WVU, the Mountaineers, uh, banjos coming yes, up sir. with the burning couches. Love Pac Man. I'll never forget the the look of respect he gave me when I told him I was at Virginia Tech <laughs> from oh from two thousand to two thousand four. He looked at me like I was a real one. Plus two thirty for the Mountaineers. Now rolling out the air raid. Air raid light, uh, fifty-one is the total. Thoughts on this one? Because it seems a little odd to me, Colby, that we got two private school pussies here in the backyard brawl, quarterbacking for these teams. Kendon Slovis, JT Daniels, of course, people uh, running from fights. Private school pussies <laughs> running well, from Pitt, a good Pitt fight. Lost a ton. Not only did they lose uh, Kenny Pickett to the NFL, they lost uh, Jordan Addison to USC. Um, led college football, 17 touchdown uh, catches. They also lost their offensive coordinator. Um, I, I mean, I got a hot take. What? I'm going to say they didn't lose that much. Okay. Cause they got everything else back. Yeah. You're right. They lost some, some, t- some marquee guys last 11 of these games, uh, seven and four, as far as being decided by a touchdown mm-hmm. or less Colby keeps talking about the backyard brawl, the intensity it's, of it. It's the best man. This uh, is, this is, this thank is football. you. Thank you. Football gods for bringing this back. It's been 12 lonely years and I can see <laughs> the, the, the fans out there, yeah. Myron kids saying, are they going to be throwing batteries at each other? Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Let's not, let, let, this is this is hatred at its best. If you've had, if you guys have ever been to to any bars in Morgantown or in Pittsburgh, 
you mentioned this game yeah. and, and it's like a, you, when uh, you walk into a wild west saloon, you know, everything I've stops, never, never everything's fucking, everything's <laughs> in a movie. You know record, what I mean? Like the record script. Yeah. yeah. Comes and off. and uh, <laughs> this is, this is fantastic. They've been, they've been playing since 1895. I don't know why they would not ever play each other for fucking 12 years, but anyway, we got it back seven and a half is too much though. Guys look, these teams mm. look West Virginia brings back their whole offensive line yeah. now, but their offensive line um, wasn't good. Like they, I mean, they led the country in sacks allowed uh, not great rush, running the ball. Like they didn't have a good offensive line, but they're bringing all of them back, uh, you know, and Pitt's defensive line is really good. But one thing about the air raid is you get the ball out hot. Randy cross was just talking about it on our show. You you make a yeah. quick boom 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 and uh, so Pitt returns their entire defensive line, most of their secondary. Uh, it I mean, it's, the whole story here is that West Virginia is not returning as much. That ton of production gone on defense, ton of production gone on offense. Completely, Dude, I am never gonna take over a touchdown in the fucking backyard, bro. Give me, can you All say right? the name I, it, of the Pitt offensive coordinator? Pitt, uh, Pitts, from, Graham Harrell? No, no, Pitt, Pitts, offensive oh, oh, coordinator oh, from oh, Boston uh, College. Uh, Frank Signetti Jr. Or right? Yeah, yeah. Frank, Say that again. Yeah, Frank Signetti Jr. His brother's the head coach of J. When you're a guy yeah. named Pat Narduzzi, you call a guy <laughs> named Frank Signetti Jr. to come well, and, in and, and, and remodel your offense from that that hippie ass hat Mark Whipple throwing the ball all over the and, place. And if you look at the history, first off, Signetti, born and raised in Pittsburgh. He run, he's his gonna dad. Run the, Coached for West Virginia. Oh, mm. it goes deep. Whoa. It goes deep. Whoa. Uh, yeah, mean, West he, Virginia covered every time as an underdog of seven and a half points or more last year. I I think I just don't see. I guess I think West Virginia is going to be in this game, right? Like this of feels course. like of a course. three, four point, six point game. Of co- yes, this game is hatred. It's it, look. They've been waiting for this. Ne- neither of these coaches have uh, have experienced the backyard brawl. It's funny they the they don't know ticket sales in college football are down ten no, percent. They don't oh, know. Oh, you put this game know. on at a fucking NFL stadium, sold out. They, it's almost like the fans want to see the teams they hate, right? Uh, wow, look at you, you're bitter. WVU plus seven and a half, man, you got to take it. See, Kramer, you're going, you're going, uh, you're taking Pittsburgh here. Huh? You're, you're. I mean, I, I think that Pitt is going to be able to roll. Like they're going to run the ball. Uh, into this West Virginia defense at, at will, and their defensive line is going to control the game. And you're gonna you're gonna be like, "Wow, Colby, what the fuck? You got excited about a backyard brawl. Your heart got all swollen because <laughs> this is college football, and you had to take the dog. This is not the time to do that." Uh, yes, big, it is. Big talent gap. Pittsburgh rolls minus keep, seven and a half. Keep an eye out on Dante a, Stills on the West Virginia D line. Be a, a donkey. Be a donkey and take the seven and a half like they want you to, Sean. You know better. No, I like I I like West Virginia. That, I, that's I think, what I mean. You're being a donkey. They're they're luring you in with this. Hook. Well then, Eaw, <laughs> give me the seven and a half, how motherfucker. About, how about the quarterback angle too? I think West Virginia's yeah, got the I mean, edge. J T. Daniels. They were both at, at USC. J T. Daniels gets injured. Keaton Slovis takes his job. You think it's not personal J- for JT Daniels? Uh, JT Daniels, yeah. JT has, Daniels has a chip on his shoulder. No, he got beat out by Stetson Bennett. End of argument. One yeah, and natty, he was though. injured. One and natty. <laughs> it's true. And Jackson Dart beat out <laughs> Keaton Slovis. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, they, they both have Carson Wentz beat fights. out Nick Foles. <laughs> 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 All right, moving over. 5 p.m. on Thursday, Penn State uh, taking on Purdue. A little conference battle here mm. uh, over in West Lafayette. Minus three and a half for the Nittany Lions on the road, minus one seventy five on the money line, plus one forty five for the Boilermakers. Fifty three and a half is the total. Drew Brees will be in the house to give a pregame. You can do anything talk. you want as long as you put your <laughs> mind to it. We, we, we've got live audio <laughs> from the. <laughs> no, I mean I'm not being serious. I just, there's, I mean, talk. Remember when they tried to put him on TV? Oh my God, that was a disaster! Just wh- why do you assume qu- all quarterbacks are interesting? We heard him do that. <laughs> you sound m- like Colby right yeah. now. Wait, all, what do you mean? <laughs> all quarterbacks heard, are interesting. They're promoting quarterbacks. N- name it's me, big quarterback. N- uh, n- name me a couple quarterbacks that are interesting. Michael Vick's uh, interesting. Peyton and Eli Manning. Let's go. Oh come on, Ryan. Save uh, that. Save that for your Omaha Productions work. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I would love. To, I mean, t- listen. Uh, all things. Uh, hopefully, uh, in the future, one day I'll be shaking Eli's hand. All right. Uh, Penn State owns Purdue, and and James Franklin's been good 
in openers at Penn State. Uh, six and two in his eight openers, including going into Wisconsin and beating them sixteen to ten last year. I think they can get this done. Again, I'm high on Penn State coming in to the season, so of course I'm going to take Penn State here. Uh, Purdue loses David Bell. I mean, Penn State does lose Jahan Dotson, but mm-hmm. I, I think this is Sean Clifford. He's been in the program a long time. I mean, you could even make a case similar to Kenny Pickett, where the guy's been in the program forever. He, you know, he has the age, he has the experience, and finally has his year. Um, and I think this is a great. Th- they're telling you to take Purdue as the small home dog here. Love, love the road favorite, Penn State. <laughs> Colby, what's this? What's this environment going to be like? Oh, it's going to be lit. Yes. Purdue fans will be going <laughs> crazy. It. Hey, it is. It, 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 it will be lit. And it stinks. And uh, it's fishy line. Young Colby would say this is a fishy line. <laughs> uh, Purdue. Let's talk about them for a second. Version one of the Danta base. Aiden O'Connell. Fishy line. Aiden O'Connell, absolute beast. Um, and Penn State, the biggest question mark, I think, is probably going to be in the secondary where they lost. You know, a two of four. Uh, also, Manny Diaz comes in as DC. Life after Pry, um, and and uh, Aiden O'Connell. Look, I don't fear. I, I know a lot of people say, well, they lost David Bell and Milton Wright, their their top receiver, who's supposed to be returning, is academically ineligible. Uh, so they have no wideouts. I don't buy that shit one bit. Ooh. All right, Brock Thompson's a beast. They they brought in a, a kid from Auburn. They have uh, two kids coming in from Iowa uh, in the transfer portal. They still have a great great tight end in Durham. This offense is still going to fly. Give me Purdue plus three and a half. Let's go. Uh, I mean, this is this is situational handicapping one hundred and one. You lose an inspirational uh, leader in that locker room and Coach Pry down, oh down, God, down in Blacksburg. Right? There's zero percent chance <laughs> I was ever taking Penn State in this spot, and I Purdue. Un- They're trying to get you to take Purdue. This is a classic trip up spot for Penn State. Pur- this- what do you mean? What are they, what are you talking about? Opening night, yeah. Thursday night. They're going to the be road. Yeah, they Sean got. Clifford, or are they lo- they're looking to they're looking ahead to Ohio it. next week. No, it's Sean Clifford, dude. Yeah, I he's mean, he's going to have a good year. Yeah, one of his outcomes could be Kenny Pickett. The other could be Sean Clifford. The continuation of Sean Clifford. Penn State lost to pretty much every good quarterback they played last year. Uh, Who's the better quarterback in this game? O'Connell. Probably? O'Connell. Let's go. Let's go. I again. That you nailed it, right? Sean Clifford is not is not beating too many guys that are better than him. I mean, the Penn State receiving core is going to be good, and without the yeah. defense led by Coach Pry, Manny Diaz is a pussy from Miami. He failed down there. <laughs> I know right, you're grabbing you're grabbing for sure. I know he he's once you know Purdue the is the play. I, I know I'm on Purdue. Thank you. No, I meant Penn State. <laughs> Purdue is the play they want you to take. Right. You fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, maybe, but call me a sucker. I'm with Colby on this one. All right. We're going. We're going. I mean, we could we could just save that as a drop. <laughs> call me a sucker. I'm with Colby on this one. Uh, we're going back in time, 4 p.m. <laughs> out here on the West Coast, zooming over to Stillwater, Oklahoma, where the Oklahoma State Cowgirls, Cowboys, minus twenty two against Central Michigan, minus two thousand on the money line. Sean, we got a ten to one money line. Love college football for that. Fifty nine is the total. All right, that, I mean, this is a big number for an Oklahoma State team to lay. That like first note that is just simply Oklahoma State, not generally a team you want to lay big numbers with. Oklahoma State though last year dominant against the spread, ten and two. Although. One of the games they didn't cover was as a twenty-one point favorite or greater. They in games that were favored by this much, they were one and one. Lost their defensive coordinator. It probably matters. Uh, lost the their let alone their defense coordinator. A ton of their defensive they, production. Yeah, top yeah. four tacklers yeah. they lost. Um, but they did bring in Derek Mason. What do you think about him, Colby, as a new DC? Not I think impressed. he's a good. I think he's a good defensive coordinator. But I just think you still lost what you lost. So. Uh, it might take him a little bit to to get his his, his players in there, but well, I do gosh. worry about Central Michigan. They lost two of their tackles to the NFL. Now you got the athletic edge rushers of Oklahoma State. No. I think that could be key. Well, remember last time what happened and in, in, in when these two squared off in Stillwater, that crazy ending with the pitch. That uh, was like oh, a hail mary. Shit. Do you remember that? I do that remember. Was oh yeah, the wild. game. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely wild game, and it actually that play should have never happened because there should have been a ten second yeah, runoff. Yeah, what and the fuck? Just, just an absolute crazy. Wait, why are they randomly there. playing again? 
I don't know, but uh, it's fantastic. Were there some and, weird ties uh, here. I'm on Central Michigan. I think Daniel Richardson. Uh, I'm high on Central Michigan in the MAC this year, and and Daniel Richardson, a quarterback, and Lou Nichols at running back. I think the ground game will be pretty damn successful for Central Michigan. I know that you you touched on they lost the tackles, but what was the what, what was the game Central Michigan won as a massive dog? That this is it. Wait, that was last year? Oh no 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 no! Uh, a couple years ago. In no, but Stillwater, I'm saying in 2021. I have a note that they won a game where they were an underdog of like plus nine hundred. I'm trying. I'm blanking on what game it was, but um, Central Michigan last year. I'm, I'll pull it up. In 2020, no. you said though. No, 2021 last okay. year. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, Central Michigan seems like a lot of points for this Oklahoma State team. I, uh, that's there's zero percent chance I'm laying 22 points with Oklahoma State ever. Oh, you're probably thinking of the Wazoo game in the bowl game. That's what you're thinking of when were they what, that big of they were big dogs, but Wazoo didn't like they they didn't have anybody like a bunch of players sat out. Right. John yeah. cashed a big ticket. Yeah. He has fond memories. Uh, I'll take Central Michigan getting a 22 here. I mean, yeah, I, Oklahoma State. Is yeah, this going to be on one of the TVs? Yeah. Do we have room for it? Of course. Okay. Just check them. Check out God's eye. When's Lehigh play Colby? Friday, Friday night, Lehigh, Villanova, plus thirty right. and a half. That'll be my bonus. Great, Great rivalry. Come Great on. transition because we're gonna head over to some. So we're all we're all taking Central Michigan. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely not taking Oklahoma. Heading over to Friday for some uh, Friday six pack action. First up, Colby's uh, trying his best to mush my Virginia Tech Hokies as they head out to the seven five seven to take. You want to talk about a trap game? Old Dominion ODU is catching seven and a half at home. Plus two fifty on the money line minus three ten for my Hokies. 48 and a half is the total. We know Bud Foster is talking to Brent Pry, and we know that coach Foster <laughs> thinks this is a trap game. Yeah. So they should be prepared for the trap. Look, I'm with Bud Foster. This is a trap game. This is a big number to be laying with a Hokies team that is is thin and definitely has some inexperience at some important positions. But quarterback is not one of those. And so do I I mean, if there's one thing I have a little bit of confidence in is that they're going to be able to go on the the quarterback's going to be able to go on the road and not be uh not have the moment be too big. Uh, Coach Prize first game. I think the defense is going to play hard as shit for him. And you bet your ass I'm laying this. This is this is not a number you you should bet. Listen to me. Where's my camera? Well, Ryan, maybe please, you, please, maybe, no. maybe if you had the lunch pail ready to go, but uh, you can't really have a lunch pail mindset. We <laughs> we don't even have our lunch pail here. Col- Sean, he or Colby, he doesn't even know what lunch pail mentality is. Oh, I do. I also know that uh, Virginia Tech. 22 and 18 only in Norfolk all time. ODU home dog. They will be fired up. And the ODU uh, head coach, Ricky rain. Uh, it was the OC at Penn state wall. Uh, coach Pry was the defensive coordinator at Penn state. So he'll He's know gonna how to know. shut that shit down. No, I would say defense greater Ricky, than offense. <laughs> I think Ricky Rain is gonna know how to screw up some Ricky Ronnie. Uh, oh, Ronnie, uh, yeah. Ricky Bobby, yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie. Ronnie. Uh, how do R A H N E? You pronounce <laughs> it, Ronnie. Ronnie? Yeah. Fuck, Sean. We're gonna get these negative. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, look, I mean, they, they were really red hot. Right they were now. red hot last year to end the season. ODU. That was his year Not one. Not a real one. Year one for for Ricky Ronnie six and seven allegedly <laughs> and and they, they rattle off what they rattle off five straight wins to end the season. Oh, However, wow. they're in a look ahead spot because they play at East Carolina week two. <laughs> so uh, this is now that's delightful. You know, this, this is delightful. Is, that's a cl- clear look ahead spot. At least they have the courage to schedule East Carolina, unlike Virginia Tech. Um, so my sources that, say that there uh, there may be some some heavy amounts of sharp money on the uh, uh, old Dominion side. What so, are the splits, Ryan? Uh, let's just say there's a lot more big bets coming in on old. Dominion. Yeah, I'm all in on ODU. Colby, you're taking the road favorite in Virginia Tech. I I'm gonna take Virginia see, Tech. This, wow. this line this drops some. It drops some. Before I kind of liked it at ODU, but I think it's seven and a half. Give me give me. Oh the yeah, they they got to sucker some more VT money in. Setting the trap, you idiots! Uh, Coach Pry is—it's—it's <laughs> it's more than just. Football. I like Coach Pry. No, you and, don't. 
How, Don't, how dare how you? How are you going to cover a big uh, spread with defense? Though? ODU's offensive coordinator quit like three weeks ago. Yeah, that was that was a major major turn in my, that, in uh, my that was like when uh, Joe Judge <laughs> was getting guys to retire, and Kramer's like, "Good, get them out of the program. <laughs> they don't want to be here. They don't have what it takes for all rise culture." Five p.m. on Friday, we got the Illini. Uh, another, another conference game here. Illini heading to Blooming, Indiana. Colby described this Bloomington. as a, as Bloomington. <laughs> Bloomington, <laughs> Indiana. Colby described this on. as a pointless Big Ten game, and then yeah. makes it part of his. And then six he pack. makes it part of his. I six can't. I can't. Can't figure this guy <laughs> You're out. Just trying to read your situation. No, I, I don't think both teams are, are are great, but I mean, it is great to have a conference game in week one. It, it'd, be, it'd be great I, if all the all these other conferences would do that. That I agree yeah. with. Either go full blown like preseason bowl games week one, or where everyone plays in, in like a different conference, or have conference games. They're just better. Illinois uh, catching three on the road, plus one thirty on the money line. Indiana minus one sixty. Forty six is the total. I mean, it's a Big Ten total, that's for sure. Forty six. Brett Bielma <laughs> has, has never uh, lost to Indiana seven and zero oh in his oh, career. Jesus. And I, I like my boy Bobby DeVito. You know, I I kind of like some of what I saw Tommy, out of him. Tommy DeVito. Why did I call him Bobby? <laughs> I was looking at the wrong. I know a guy named Bobby <laughs> DeVito. <laughs> That's the problem. He He's sold a, he sold you that hose, didn't you? <laughs> <That Right>? Bastard, <laughs> Tommy DeVito, which I also yeah, like. This guy, the guy who, who couldn't stand the Bill Snyder mistake. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ! Hopefully, he's not listening. Tommy DeVito, um, yeah, I like what we saw against Wyoming. I mean, it, how much are we factoring into just Wyoming sucking no, versus Illinois true. defense? I mean, it, it, yeah, Illinois held Wyoming at one for twelve on third down. I okay. feel like that's got to be worth something. Again, Tommy DeVito still was only completing for <laughs> each pass for five yards of completion. So the check down True. king. Uh, but no, I, I think. But you're could right. that work against Indiana? I think it can. I mean, look, Chase I, Brown, I, 151 yards, he's a three beast. touchdowns. He's a beast, and uh, I do like Indiana getting Connor Basilak. But I think there's an advantage to getting a game under your belt already. So I, I'm gonna yeah, take, I, I'm gonna take the Illini. And one of the more uh, like the nerds uh, or a, any nerd listeners, I would love the stats on teams that played Week Zero uh, against the spread versus teams. You know, this is their first game because I'm with Colby. I would ner- say which nerds are you? Are you asking me because I have that prepared? Oh, you do. Yeah. What is Week uh, Zero versus? You guys are on the wrong side. I'm going to be taking Indiana because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fade the teams that played week zero. What's the what's excluding the FCS games? Uh, we're going to say 29 and 50 ATS. Wow. Over, I believe that sample is perhaps a decade. I mean, this more. is a fun game because you know I feel like the winner will have a decent like the loser's not going to make a bowl. So the say. the. I did. I did not jot it down, but the trend gets even. The trend gets insane with when it's a conference game. The trend gets like eighty plus percent when you have it being a conference game. So very strong indicators on Indiana here. For me, it was purely like Wyoming is is not meant to be an FBS program you, this year. Do you know who Indiana hired as offensive coordinator? Again, we're we're not worrying about who Indiana is because this is a fade of Illinois purely based on the fact that they just beat the crap out of a team that should not be. I disagree in FBS football right I now. I disagree. I I watched the every every play in a shortcut version of that game. <laughs> And I, Colby, I was watching a fucking a, a Division Two team by the end of the game. I watched every play. I, too, Illinois, buddy. like they played tough football, but they were playing tough football against kids that weren't on their level. I'm taking, I'm taking Illinois. Colby, let's give me talk. Indiana. I'm on the give Illini. Me, give me your thoughts on the Indiana defensive coordinator before we move on. Oh, he's a former Colorado Buffalo safety. Played for Gary Barnett. So, he's but you're picking Illinois. Fantastic. <laughs> oh no, for, uh, for, I thought you said Illinois safety. Or Illinois, Illinois defensive, defensive coordinator. coordinator. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. uh, but Indiana is Tom <laughs> Allen is is a defensive coach, but they, they they hired an offensive coordinator. His name is Walt Bell. He was the UMass head coach recently. Like that. Oh, okay. That's why we're fading there we them. Go. All right. That's there's why the we're fading them. Fade yes. oh. UMass. He, he uh, Walt Bell. Walt Bell. He hasn't made my black book yet, so uh, for now I'll be on Indiana. <laughs> Fade Walt Bell from UMass. I'm writing that down. <laughs> that is a great nugget. Well, I mean, Sean, you remember how much money UMass made us? Yeah, that was an automatic fade. We we were just kicking ass for years. Got an extra room in my house because of UMass. <laughs> wow, 
kidding. I'm renting above, right. above ground pool. Um, I mean, maybe he's just a, uh, maybe he's a coordinator, not a head coach. Sean. Oh, that's you a good thing about that. Ah, uh, getting s- <laughs> all right. 7 p.m. on Friday. Yeah, I need night. some drama, me and Colby. The room's spinning. <laughs> <laughs> I get motion sickness from Ryan's. <laughs> We're heading out to Boulder. Uh, speaking of things that might hel- help you spin, Ooh, it's smoking my weed. Colorado, 13 and a half point home dog under the lights. Uh, with TCU coming to town, minus 500 for TCU, plus 375 for Colorado. 55 and a half is the total. Colby, what's happened to our uh, definitely not bison buffaloes. Uh, well, what's happened still is rolling every, out buffaloes, everybody, so. everybody transferred out. Well, what happened? This line opened at seven and a half. Boulder's beautiful. It's now thirteen and a half. That's you remember? Crazy. Uh, yeah, but I'm telling you. Uh, first off, I'm surprised these teams have never played. But um, <laughs> you're like shaming them. Well, no, that's just. I mean, I just feel like you know they were both both Big Twelve. I, I know they weren't there at the same time, but I'm still surprised they didn't have an out of conference game at some point. Uh, at TCU bringing in Sunny Dykes in the air raid. They're heading up to Boulder. I just think that's tough. You go to elevation is a factor, and I think. Oh, co- I thought uh, now not to jump in, but mm-hmm. I thought I assumed Colby was going to take TCU and fade his buffs. No, 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 no. My my buffs they Home lost a lot. Dog and Colorado in elevation early. I think it still applies. I actually would go a step further, and I should have called this out, I guess, for West Virginia. But I feel like some of that air raid stuff doesn't always happen super quick. Uh, I mean, Sonny Dykes though, that he walks into a good situation. There is some talent there, but I just feel like Colorado. Uh, you know, they they've when's the they're last probably time not as bad as what people think. When's a lot la- of it was was their quarterback situation last yeah, year. And when's the last time yeah. an air raid system? Their quarterback hit the road situation full was sprint. so bad. When's the last time an air USC Graham Harrell? No, that didn't work out so good. No, I mean they uh, don't. They don't always yeah. start fast. You're right. You're right. But uh, that's why I'm on the bus. I'm taking the 13 and a half. I think it's a little too much. I think Alex Fontenot, <clears throat> the running back for the bus, will uh, will have a decent game. I also think the defense not as bad as what the stats say. They were on the field the whole entire game last year. Now I know they got raided in the portal, but I think they've done a decent job bringing in some guys. <laughs> Just sounds offensive to and, get and, to and get raided in the portal. <laughs> <laughs> To know when to come. Uh, in the last ten years, TCU thirty and twenty three straight up on the road. So it's not like they're, you know, which is which is good above average here. But it's not like they're just some machine that's going to come in here in Colorado. Thirteen and a half is a lot. Uh, you, in you were in Vegas last year. Texas A and M came to to. That wasn't even on campus. That was yeah. in Denver. Yeah, and, and Colorado was winning that game for fifty nine oh minutes. Oh my god, they uh, almost could cover the hell out of that. Uh, Colorado was a de- it was yeah. a decent sized dog. I had him there. on the yeah. money line. Passes. I mean, yeah, you you n- mentioned the elevation as well. I think just you're sit when you're running air raid, you're kind of you're trying to play more plays, I, which is strangely probably not a good strategy for them. So D Bettis in the YouTube chats uh, claiming Colorado's trash at best reminds me of the New York Giants. Oh, well, no need for that, D Bettis. <laughs> wow. No need to catch and strays. I mean, uh- <laughs> Are we all in Colorado, Kramer? You're also this in is Colorado. a problem because Cole. I, I I did forget Colby really likes Colorado. Well, I locked up the <laughs> under. Uh, they're not yeah. winning. They're not going to win the game. TCU is going to win the game. I just think oh, it's going to be closer. No. Yeah. Jesus. What all are you right. doing, Kramer? I guess I'll take it. I, I I'm <laughs> worried now, but I yeah. Let's. It doesn't. It doesn't meet any of my systems. So. <laughs> Wait. What? What doesn't meet any of your systems? It's not, it's not meeting any of my fade systems. Oh, okay. I well, I thought you were gonna do like a Nick Sirianni simple systems. No, 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 bit. no, no, no bets. <laughs> All serious. We're making picks. All right. Hey, speaking of making picks, have you made your pick for our NFL Survivor, aka Run Your Pool? That's right. Uh, we were running a free NFL Survivor contest, giving away five hundred dollars cash and a two hundred fifty dollars gift certificate to the winner. Uh, give certificates to the SGPN store. All you got to do to sign up play dot run your pool.com slash SGPN. That's play dot run your pool.com slash SGPN. Again, if you're listening to the show, you know how to play NFL survivor um, and highly recommend running your pools on run your pool. I mean, sign up for our pool first. So they know we sent you and then start running your pools. I mean, whether it's pick them survivor, fantasy college, uh, ATS, whatever it is, Run your pool has you covered, fully customizable. Again, if you're the guy running the pool in the office, the frat, the uh, oil, uh, oil lube, wherever your group of guys hang out, <laughs> yeah, maybe you and the buds just get together, at Jiffy Lube. 
uh, whatever it is. You got to uh, <laughs> set up over at play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. Play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. Get that 100% deposit bonus on Sleeper over on or, uh, player props for the NFL and fantasy and college football. In fact, we're going to put together a three team uh, player prop parlay. Uh, you can win 2x to 20x. All you got to do is sleeper.com slash SGP. Automatically match your first deposit up to $100. Promo code S G P. You know, I'm high on uh, Sean Clifford kind of figuring it out this year. So my sleeper pick is Sean Clifford over 251 and a half passing yards. And Hey, if you, if you want to copy this mm. um, lineup, we're putting together, go to sleeper.com slash S G P join our group, join Let's our go. group. And you can just hit copy picks Colby. What is your pick for uh, the sleeper? Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, what Louis- game you going to first. I'm going Louisiana Tech, Missouri. Uh, that happening Thursday night, okay, and nice. uh, Matthew Downing, Air Raid quarterback, uh, Sonny Cummings, new head coach in Ruston. So uh, they're gonna throw the ball a lot, and the over under on yardage is only 205 and a half yeah, yards. Wow. And get and get this, Missouri's defense, pass defense, run defense, horrible last year. So give me over two and a half or t- uh, 205 and a half yards with Matthew Downing. Kramer. I mean, obvious, right? I'm going Hen and Hooker. Over. Dog. Over. Dog. Passing yards. 272 and a half. Aren't they gonna absolutely shred? Well, that's the scary thing, is like, do they bench him? <laughs> because they're easily, up by so much. Isn't he gonna easily get that? I mean, that smooth long release of his that Fuente couldn't have any more of, so he <laughs> sent him packing. <laughs> Wait, who are they playing? Ball um, State. Ball State. All right. So let's. So you're you're not worried about them not playing, uh, getting pulled at some point. I think two seventy two is a pretty low number. Okay, two seventy two and a half. I mean, so. we, we've talked about Hendon Hooker as a Heisman hopeful for for me. I think what thirty forty to one. I I certainly think this is the kind. If you're gonna do that, and and if you're a program like Tennessee, you absolutely want a fucking Heisman hopeful. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we had some. Padded stats. So I'm going Col- Colby. You like that narrative, right? Sure. Some sure. good college music there too. <laughs> I'm going all in top. on it. Um, if we go three and zero here and hit this, it will pay six X. All right. So, what were uh, the other ones? I, I need to get in. Actually, uh, why don't you just put it in? I'll just copy you. Yeah. It's easier. Sleeper.com slash SGP. Sign up there. And again, yes, I have already set all in as my default payout method. Of course. You can do the round robin. Uh, like two out of three. But again, you're not going to win as much. So, I mean, don't let us know if you do that, though. <laughs> we're going to judge you. Yes. And um, yeah, we're in sleeper.com slash SGP. Oh, Check out the squad chat. I'm seeing uh, really rel just uh, gave out a um, pretty sweet MLB play here. A lot of fun. And I'm seeing some, uh, some guys hopping in. The squad. All right, let's do it. Twenty-five to win one hundred and fifty. All right, let's go. Sleeper.com slash SGP. All right, second half of the games coming up. Speaking of which, uh, Ball State, Tennessee. Kramer, walk us through it. Ball State, Tennessee, thirty-five and a half. Uh, Tennessee laying a big number here. Just, just talking about this game. Love Hendon Hooker in this spot. I was just so delighted to see that when we're out in Vegas, Sean. I, I guess I don't know the rules in Nevada, but. God, the college prop market, it's blossoming. Like uh like like a like a market going well, through. Well, and puberty. it's all, and honestly it is awesome that sleeper. So many doing different it. props, yeah. Colby's gonna destroy sleeper. Yes. Col- they're gonna be mad that we're running with this because the database is uh or it, sleeper's no match for the database. I have to imagine the database is slightly ahead of the sleeper computers when it comes and to And we, we just mentioned it on the DFS show, and we're gonna do Ooh. that every time. Every Props. time we drop a DFS show this year, we'll be having that. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to tune into the pregame show on Saturday and hear props. That's not that nine a.m. Yeah. Uh, Pacific. I'm for gonna, the pregame. I'm show. tuning in yep. just to hear about. Props. Or no, eight no, a.m. Yeah. Well, Sean, I'm uh, my brain. I'm having an NFL brain, Ryan. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so sixty-eight's the total. So the total tells you what. While well, we like Hennon Hooker to go over, that's a lot of points. Um, it's implying that they think Ball State's going to be able to score a little bit, which probably. Is good for our hen and hooker over passing yards prop because it means they're gonna it's not gonna be thirty five nothing. It'll be like thirty five fourteen. So it'll force them to stay in there, keep lighting it up. Uh D Bettis had a good point saying uh bet Tennessee first half. 
that's probably not a horrible idea, but I, I mean, Colby, is there any reason we should be considering ball state here at 35 and a half? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I, I do like that coach. I think he gets the maximum out of his team, but they lost a ton. They were like one of these teams last year with super the, seniors. Uh, yeah. And, and drew Plitt, their quarterbacks gone. They were a bowl team barely a season ago. And I, I do think bouncing back coming into a hostile place, that place is, is definitely gets lit as well. You know, I think I saw and, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to lay the points with Tennessee, but I am concerned because you know, the hooker's probably going to be out by the third quarter. So the question is, is can ball state get enough garbage points there to cover this thing? Taking the first half is scary because it is Tennessee still, but they do have, they also have uh Pittsburgh on deck. So worth mentioning tough game on deck. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm sure Pittsburgh won't be looking ahead because of the rivalry game they're playing, but Tennessee, if they're as to your point, if they're crushing, are they going to take guys out? I think they're going to have enough offense where it won't matter. I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I think this is going to be one of those where people are like, "Whoa, look at Tennessee! Yeah, uh, Hendon Hooker, five touchdowns, yeah, three hundred fifty yards." Well, and and I mean, shout out to people uh, who got down on that UNC. That was the the UNC uh, game, similar size spread and similar size handicap. Where it's like, oh, they're going to light it up. People are going to be buying in. Man, that was a brutal end of the cover. <laughs> they, we should have covered that. They they get the touchdown with like. You know, like a minute left. Uh, they don't really need the touchdown. They put it in. They get the cover. Oh no! Wait, they go back, and apparently his <laughs> knee was down just before he got it in. They 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 went to fucking commercial and then yeah. came back and took it off the so board. So it's like ten minutes later, <laughs> and yeah. then they score. They run another play. <laughs> they get the touchdown, and then they get called back for holding. So they had back to back touchdowns wiped off. And then after that point, they were just like, ah, oh, fuck it. We'll just they ran one more play, and oh man. What a brutal way to lose that UNC bet. I'm worried <laughs> this could happen with this Tennessee team. I mean, again, I, I, you have I can't a, take ball state. You have a returning quarterback who, for me, is one of the better returning quarterbacks in the land. And you also have Ball State, a team that Colby kind of highlighted. They show up in any sort of loss this is production a, metric. This is a game to get the alumni excited about. This yeah, is a, I mean, this is a showcase game for heading to hooker. You know, against weaker let's, opponents to light it up. Let's. We need to get our. We need to get our. That hook up. is tough though, right? Because couldn't you see this being like fifty-two <laughs> to fourteen, something no, like that? No, because I see like, the way these teams go for two now. All willy. Well, fifty-two fourteen. Yeah. we would be covering. Oh yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> back in my day, you 49, 14, no, you I know get what it. I mean. I yeah, yeah. I think Tennessee is going to go for two more than once. So I'm not not overly concerned. All right. Uh, that was Thursday, four p.m. Now we're moving over back to five p.m. on Thursday. Louisiana Tech, heading to Missouri. Beautiful Columbia, uh, Colby. You ever been there? No, nah, we no, need, I we, have not. We need to. Right? I've, I've, I mean, I've always heard good things about the. I've the, been to Missouri, just not Columbia. How lit yeah. it gets uh, for a night game in Columbia. Minus nineteen and a half is the spread. Minus fourteen hundred. Louisiana Tech is eight to one on the money line. Sixty one is the total. Um, Colby, do Colby, we you, you like Matthew Downing and is over for the um for the sleeper pick. I'm I'm guessing maybe you like them to be able to move the ball, get some points against a Mizzou defense that is now on their third defensive coordinator in three years. They are returning eight starters, but is is uh, La Tech going to be able to move the ball and get enough points to get this cover? I think probably Sunny Cumbie. I mean, uh, you have a little bit of a shift from a philosophy standpoint from going from uh, Skip Holtz to to Sunny Cumbie, but uh, Missouri. I just I didn't like the off season that they had. The Connell Bazelak transfers out to to Indiana. They did land a five star freshman, but um, and that is uh, Luther Burden. Yeah, the wide yeah. receiver. That that'll be interesting to watch. But but that's tough. Uh, you're a freshman receiver. S E C. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the points. They got Smoke Harris. Louisiana Tech does. He's a beast wide out. Uh, Be careful, Sean. You look at last year. You look at last you year what at what is. Missouri did. That you know they they barely beat Central Michigan, only won by ten. So I think Louisiana Tech's a little better than than Central Michigan. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take. Uh, I just think they're a tougher team. And it's you not, into it's a nineteen team. and a half. I kind of like the nineteen and a half. Ooh. I think if they wanted you to take Louisiana uh -oh. Tech, if the books wanted action on, they would make it twenty one and a half, right? Or twenty four. I, I think nineteen and a half 
as as cute as it sounds, is a playable number here. And you look at like if you were to pull up La Tech season last year, you say, "Oh, this team sucks, right? This team, look at their record. They suck. They they, they got they, they got their heart broken a lot of games. Uh, SMU had a hail mary they converted against them. Um, they they were a lot better than their actual record. So I do think that this team will be a little chippier than what what well, most and are expecting. I, and, I, and I think to Ryan's point, I don't know if they hit the ground running and completely light it up, but I do think you're a new DC going up against um, you know a transfer quarter uh, quarterback who's coming from Georgia uh, to TCU to La Tech. It's only his second career start, but I think in the air raid, he'll be able to do enough. New defensive coordinator, new. You know, I, I don't know. Like I, I, I just don't see Mizzou dominating here. You look at La Tech last year; they lost mm. by a one to Mississippi State at Mississippi State. Yeah, they lost. They lost at NC State by seven, uh, and then it, they, they lost to SMU in that hail mary that I was alluding to. Would Missouri be looking ahead to a game against Kansas State? Potentially. Is that a yeah. is that a hidden That's a Kansas deep yeah. rivalry? Yeah, yeah. So. That's who they have on deck. A mini mini bye week with the Thursday night to, to Saturday, but you know, it co- we called it out uh, in the last uh, situation, so I, I don't know if it's worth. Is so it worth? Kramer and I, or sorry, Colby and I are on La Tech. Kramer, what are you doing? I'm also on La Tech. I mean, Missouri's in the camp of those teams that real dicey to lay point, big points with them ever. Um, so with all the question that Colby highlighted, yeah, take the points. New Mexico State. So, oh. so again, 6 p.m. here on the West Coast, we're oh. heading up to <laughs> Minneapolis. Is that Ginger starting for him, Colby? <laughs> gotta be. He's, He's gotta right? be. He's gotta New be. New Mexico State heads to Minnesota, where Minnesota is laying 36 and a half. <laughs> 52 and a half is the total. So uh, this is a team that played week zero. So we should be fading to the tune of what did I say earlier? 29 and 50 ATS. Well, so, I mean, this is a this is a Jerry Kill revenge spot, right, Colby? Uh, he, he's, he was quoted as saying he would never step foot back in campus in 2017, but now he's doing it as the head coach of the Aggies. He also called PJ Fleck a me guy, <laughs> and uh, that makes it really tricky to handicap this game because yeah. you know PJ Fleck is probably sitting there saying, "Okay, run that shit up." Okay, uh, and uh, he gets Mohammed Ibrahim take the, back. Not going to take the foot off the gas. Yeah. Oh my God! I forgot they lost him last year early. Yeah. Tours ACL but in the Ohio State. They back? probably would have. They might have beat Ohio State. Is he, he back stay all healthy. the way? Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, they dude. They they brought back their OC. Their offense was terrible last year. They brought back the the OC. Uh, do they a have few a, years ago? Do they have another running back? I, they have like five. They perfect. were they were nasty last year. I, but that one guy was really good. I'm gonna lay the points. I, I don't feel great about it, but. I think he's got to say fuck you and keep the starters in a little longer after telling them that, right? Yeah. New Mexico State, they've won seven games since 2017. It, you <laughs> certainly, if you're a coach. Minnesota won nine last season. If you're a coach <laughs> that is feeling disrespected, you're 100% going to be aware of the point spread. And so you're 100% going to Talking make, about new Notre Dame head coach, save it for uh, tomorrow's show. You're 100%. <laughs> Going to make sure you row the boat all the way out to a 37 point lead, yeah. maybe more. Uh, again, but, there, but there's no handicap here for me because we're just fading the teams that played week zero. So I'm taking, oh. I'm taking oh. Minnesota. There you go. There you go. I mean, I think in are this you situation, taking Minnesota? I am. I'm rowing okay. the boat. We're rowing all in Minnesota. Boat. We should, uh, yeah. We we all need Photoshop opportunities. Uh, us three rowing a boat with uh, with the goat. Dbet is pointing out New Mexico State's the West Coast UMass. I don't know if I go that nah, far. Nah, dude, they're in the SEC. Get respect them a little bit. <laughs> they do play an SEC schedule. <laughs> they do. It's amazing. All right, uh, seven p.m. on the West Coast in, uh, but still Friday. We're going heading out to Tempe. Arizona State, Herm Edwards still still coaching. Minus twenty five against Northern Arizona, who I believe are up. Do you know where where is Northern? Flagstaff, Flagstaff. Lumberjacks, baby. A fifty. I've I've seen their campus very much resembled the high school program. Fifty three and a half is the total. I mean, Arizona State's lost a ton. Um, they lost seventeen players in the transfer portal. Obviously, they lost Jaden Daniels to LSU. It does seem like uh, another shoe is going to drop. Either Herm Edwards getting suspended, him getting fired. It feels like he's kind of on thin ice. Isn't this? It, I I don't know. Like this well, just we seems fade like them it, later. 
No, this is the great opportunity to no. win the Arizona Cup for oh, Northern no, Arizona. They it's won an FCS school alert. They beat Arizona last year in the season opener, right? Now they take on ASU and Tempe. They've been playing this game since 1915. This is a good rivalry here. Uh, Lumberjacks. RJ RJ Martinez, really good quarterback. Arizona State could obviously also be looking ahead to Oklahoma oh. State next week. This is a this is a sleepy spot for Arizona State. The program is kind of going under a bunch of really? weird stuff, and you have Northern Arizona with a chip on their shoulder and 25 points. Yes, I'm taking NAU. Give me the Lumberjacks. Let's go. I can't wait to watch this one. Can't wait to watch this. Did one. This everyone transfer one. from Arizona State, or they still have some guys? They brought in a couple transfers, hmm. but they they had they had mass exodus. Forks is, down, is Northern right? Arizona a playoff team in the FCS this year? They could be. No. I don't think they will be, but Lay, they could laying be. the yeah. points. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll fade. We'll fade Arizona State at some point, but it's not the first week against the FCS. Herm can figure that out. Temple, Sean. Yep. Little hometown Ooh. Iggy here. Little pri- private school Ooh. battle. Temple heading down to Durham to take on Duke. Duke might be one of the worst teams in college football this year, but they're laying seven points. I, this Minus is- two fifty five on the money line. Temple plus two oh five. Uh fifty one and a half is the total. I'll be honest, I have not done a deep dive on Temple. And I didn't they're listen ba- to your Temple episode. Is, Temple is really, really bad. I want to support <laughs> Temple. They're bad. Duke's they're really bad. bad. But Duke, the Temple Owls are 0 and 4 against the spread in the last four road games. Five and sixteen against the spread in their last twenty one games overall. So they're even like getting big numbers, and they can't cover it. They've averaged sixteen point three points per game. They're bringing back the same quarterback. Are you Six a, are you a Brian Westbrook guy? Yeah, I love Brian Westbrook. Well, he played at Villanova, and his running backs coach, Ooh. who recruited him, is the head coach Stan Drayton of Temple now. Oh, look what you did! There. I saw him lobbying for fans to come out. And support Temple football this year, but uh, it's in it's in Durham. I agree. And Mike Elko, I think, is a really good coach. He was with Dave Clawson for a. Lo- he knows how to win at a bad program. Blue Devils are good against yeah. the spread versus the hire. AAC. Yeah, that was a. I don't. I couldn't believe he took the job. To tell you the truth, well, My, Mike Elko. Uh, so I'm going to lay the points with the Blue Devils. Duke's yeah. a great job. You you school's got tons of dough. No and expectations. It will never matter because it's a basketball program. Although coach, you know, with coach K yeah. quote retiring, uh, you guys are laying the points with Duke. Yeah. I, 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 yep. <laughs> it doesn't feel great, but I got to do it. Right. I mean, temple is horrific. Dewan math is give me temple struggle I, to throw the ball. I think Elko can put together a plan where it becomes a factor. If temple can do a pass, Duke will be one of the worst teams in college football. We're going to be laughing that they were somehow favored by a touchdown. Western Michigan. Duke, uh, I mentioned four zero against the spread in their last four versus the AAC. Yeah, you you keep looking in that damn tiny mirror. Stop okay. looking in the past. We got to look forward, and this current Duke <laughs> team fucking sucks. Western Michigan heads to East Lansing to take on Mister Tucker and Michigan State minus twenty two and a half, minus two thousand on the money line. Western Michigan plus one thousand ten to one, Sean. Fifty-three and a half is the total. I was, I was. Uh, Western Michigan was the team I was accidentally deep diving on the YouTube pages. What did you uh, get? Well, I just, I, I really was trying to find how to say Jack Salopec, <laughs> and it turned into me watching some media availability of the players, <laughs> and then it turned into me listening to them. Clearly, it's like organic answer about how they're hyped on the season. Organic answer about how the new offensive scheme is way more exciting than last year, and then completely robotic answer about how the offensive line's looking good. <laughs> Not f- just from the quarterback, but also from uh, their, their one of their star players and running back. Um, a- another, uh, the offensive coordinator even said basically the same thing about the offensive line. This is a team that lost uh, only or all but. 22% of the returning snaps on the offensive line. Uh, this was the first game I looked at for this slate. Cause I, I thought Colby was going to put this in the six pack. It kind of profiled like mm. that. Uh, and I, I, if I didn't mention it, uh, what are we, we're back on Friday. Yeah. Friday afternoon. This is absolutely against that Michigan state defense, Mel Tucker, that defensive line, Mel Tucker, four and oh, a non-con last year against the spread. 
they're going to absolutely destroy Western Michigan's offensive line. And even though Jack uh, Salapek <laughs> looks like a fun, he he, he, he looks beat like, out an Alabama transfer he, for the starting spot. <laughs> well, again, other nugget I pulled out of this: the offensive coordinator definitely likes uh, Marion, and uh, he's a dual threat guy, but he's not ready. And so I think what we're getting is we're getting the lawn chair until the <laughs> dual threat's ready. I, I think Michigan State's just going to eat here. They are striping the game. My takeaway was also that the offensive coordinator brought in a very complex system that the players clearly have not <laughs> gotten yet. And so I, I Michigan State rolls. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, you don't need to talk me into too Michigan much. State I mean, their strength is their pass rush. They're striping the stadium, which makes me think they're going to get up for this game. What and does that mean? Like I, I a assume different some sort shirts. of yeah, like color things going on with the fans. Colby, where coordinated are you TikTok yeah. dances. I think Jarek Broussard, son of Steve Broussard, former Atlanta Falcon, uh, Colorado transfer. He's he's gonna have a big day running against the Mac. I am all over Michigan State. I think they're gonna win by like th- probably thirty five points. It's just too much for. It's just too many moving parts for Western Michigan. That was like already gonna be behind the eight ball. Oh, I I totally screwed up. I thought I had pulled a different clip. I. I wanted to pull the clip of the running back from Western Michigan attempting to describe him and the other running back as thunder <laughs> and lightning, and then continuing to say that, well, he's thunder and I'm lightning, but I also do a little bit of thunder and he does a little bit of lightning. <laughs> that's not how thunder and lightning work. One guy clearly has to be thunder, the I'm other saying, has to be good, lightning. That's not a good look. It for works you. for Patty C and Colby because one guy clearly thunder, the other guy clearly lightning. Yeah. Colby's lightning. Patty sees thunder. Ahmad Bradshaw, <laughs> Brandon Jacobs. Yeah, it, come on, it works. Wait, Brandon no, Jacobs. No, no. Is it was thunder. Tiki Barber and Ron Dane. Mm. I don't observe that <laughs> group. <laughs> Ryan refuses to acknowledge. Tiki, Tiki Barber, Barber is a piece of shit. Who was he? Did horrible things. Uh, wow. On and off the field. Hey, part two <laughs> coming up. But hey, we got the. That's right. Time for the lock dog and tease presented by win bet sports, give podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T Kramer. Kick it off lock dog tease and bonus lock. Oh. All right. So for the lock, we don't have to go off the board for the bonus lock, right? There's not a no. ton of other games uh, in, no, contention. I would actually recommend staying on the board. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right. So Wait, lock. we go off the board. Let me check it. No, <laughs> no, no. Normally we don't we need w- a Fordham player. Normally we would go off the board for the bonus lock. No new, new sheriff in town. Michigan state is going to be my lock. That, oh, that, okay. That's going to be a bloodbath. I got my lock off the board. It's going to be fine. Dog, my dog <laughs> is going, I'm going to delete it <laughs> as much as I would love to throw out a central Michigan dog. Uh, I am going to look, I think it's cute. That uh, Sean picked his Nittany Lions, oh, wow. but Coach Pry isn't in town anymore. Purdue plus one forty-five. West Lafayette is going to be Colby lit as lit AF, as the kids say. Tease, which by the I I don't know if we mentioned it, but I did nail my tease. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was included. Uh, that was included in the tout. All yep. right, Pitt down to minus one and a half. BT down to one and a half. <laughs> this is how you fucking tease, Colby. You taking notes? You taking fucking notes right now? And feeling good. Ooh, the the rest of these spreads aren't super cooperative. Of a good good. Uh, do I do I do I tease Minnesota? All right, I'll uh, I'll keep I'll keep it going. I'll double dip. Give me Purdue plus nine and a half. Mm. That's a lot of points. It's not good. Uh, well, what's your bonus lock, Ryan? My bonus lock. Can I give out a first half play? No. Colby, do you want to hear my first half? I play? do. That that would be a bonus lock if Sean would allow, but he won't. That's Tennessee first half. So instead of that, we're just gonna take Minnesota, rowing the fucking boat. Row that boat over and over and over. I'm taking <laughs> heavy chalk this week. Actually, you know what? No backyard brawl pit minus seven and a half. Ooh. Lock it up, Ooh. just so I can Ooh. fight. I know Colby's gonna try to lock up the other side, and I'm one and zero so far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should I go next? Yeah, I mean I don't know. 
For my lock, Penn State minus three and a half. Let's go. For my dog, uh, West Virginia gets the win outright Let's in go. Pittsburgh. No, for, that's a horrible pick. For my tease. I also like Illinois, but I'll, I'll I'll go I'll go big dog. I also like ODU. You want me to go ODU, Ryan? Yeah, you know what? I'll go ODU. Oh, you son of a bitch! ODU plus two fifty <laughs> on the money line. Why do you want me to be miserable? I'm gonna be so fucking angry if that happens. What time is this game? I can't watch it in the office with you. <laughs> I'm gonna go for home. my tease. Duke <laughs> down to one. Um, yeah, these aren't really great tease opportunities. Minnesota or sorry, Dude, Michigan State down to. <laughs> down to 16 and a half. I should put Duke in my teaser. Uh and then um just kidding, put, they're horrible. Put Illinois up to nine. And then for my bonus lock, West Virginia plus seven and a half. Wow. Colby, what do you got? Pew pew. We're gonna lock up uh Michigan State minus twenty two oh, and a half. Okay. I nice, like that. Nice work, Colby. The dog is going to be West Virginia oh at plus two thirty. Oh my goodness. The T's, uh let's I'm go happy. let's go Michigan State down to sixteen and a half. Let's go You guys teasing these crazy. Let's numbers. go <laughs> Central Michigan up to twenty eight. Oh wow. And I, I dare you to do Louisiana Tech. No, no. And let's go. Let's go Northern Arizona up to 31. Oh, stop it. An FCS. There we but, go. And the, the bonus lock is no, you fucking only get, you only get four points when you're teasing lo, an FCS. Lo, <laughs> bonus lock? Road rash face. Missouri State. Oh, minus eight oh. and a half Thursday night against Central Arkansas. Wait, does Bobby does uh Rich Rod play play this week? He does, but that's on that's on Saturday. Okay, well, Missouri well, State. Now you know my bonus <laughs> lock for Saturday. Missouri State minus eight and a half against Central Arkansas. Jason Shelley's oh. the quarterback of the Bears, former Utah transfer. Rodas face is gonna. Who's coming with Tarleton me? State's who's playing, and we're me. not talking. <laughs> Dude, shout out to the wind for having all these FCS. Line. Watch they out got for La- Tarleton. They yeah. got Lamar Abilene Christian up show. Oh yeah. <laughs> what what oh, kind yeah. of world are we fucking living in right now? If, if uh, Lamar, their head coach. Uh, Former Air Air Force quarterback oh, Bo Morgan, come we, on, let's go. We are just living in. I mean, Monmouth, New Hampshire, new CAA matchup. What, what yeah, are buddy. we? VMI. Oh, that's a real game. Hmm. <laughs> Get all those FCS lines, sportsgamblingpodcast.com <laughs> slash win bet, so they know we should, sent you. Should we do an FCS show too, guys? Well, Kramer or Colby has the FCS show on the college football experience. Make sure you subscribe but to that. I can do two if you guys want. No, I can do two good. if you're brave we're, enough. We're doing uh, right. we're doing uh, college football picks part two because there's a uh, there's a loaded slate and a bunch of games and no NFL. So so if uh, I did an infomercial, you would do it then, right? You would you would sign up and do an FCS. I'm gonna show, right? I'm gonna find that hose and choke you out, Colby. <laughs> Tina, uh oh, a shoe Dini is an all time infomercial as well. Uh, shout out to uh, who was the guy's voice that used to do it? Uh, he I did the uh, he did the uh, Gilbert Godfrey. Yes, yes, yes. Gilbert Godfrey. Rest, rest, rest in peace. peace yeah. But do yourself a favor and look up his uh, Shudini infomercial. It's amazing. <laughs> the kids would only know him as the Aflac Duck or the um, from uh, Aladdin. Oh yeah, you're right. The uh, horribly annoying. Bird. He was the Aflac Duck <laughs> until of his controversial oh, comments great, on the tsunami. Great tweet. Great fucking tweet. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. He got canceled yeah. for it. <laughs> It was uh, bad timing. It was weird. Why are we canceling him? Yeah. All the people. He's a he's a weirdo. Hey guys, uh, make sure you get into our college football contest, uh, which is live, ready to go. Oh, yes. Get your picks in for week one. Ten thousand credits. Let's go. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash discord. Fifteen hundred dollars up for grabs. And our NFL contest five thousand dollars up for grabs. Again, get it all sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. Toss us a nice rating review. Um, I mean, come on. We're dead. We're hungry for reviews over here. Screenshot it, send it in via the app, uh, click contest on there, and you got yourself a chance to win uh, $50 every Monday for uh, from the merch store, aka Merch Monday. I'm putting, uh, I might put five grand on Michigan State. Or maybe Let's I go. just go all in on the contest on Michigan State. <laughs> Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean. Second the Money Green. He's Ryan. Sean, a very good job. Kramer, let it ride.